Good morning, David Kirsten here with Wide Angle Media. I'm going to do what a colleague does here in Oakland, uh, Mr. Fab, and says, lead with love. So I'm going to lead with love first and say good morning. But I did want to point out this chapter that's actually in the direct line of uh, Earl Nightingale, which this book was written in the 60s, and I think this is such an important issue, and it's really something where I'm devoting a lot of my attention because I really feel like it's what's going to unlock this huge potential in individuals as well as the economy. And that's why I think it's so important that we have leaders and people that are truly invested in lifting up people and developing people to their full potential. Because I don't really see that in our leaders today. So if we get people who are willing to do what works and we implement some of these ideas, it's really going to unlock this huge boom of potential um, at, at all levels for, for all people. Um, and uh, I'll just read a few passages here just to give you a hint about what this is. And um, people who underestimate their ability to think and solve problems should familiarize themselves with recent neurological research. And again, this was in the 60s. Work at UC, the UCLA Brain Research Institute points to the there being enormous abil, enormous <laughs> abilities latent in everyone. It seems that the ultimate creative capacity of the human brain may, for all practical purposes, be infinite. Scientists have been amazed by the enormous reserve capacity of the mind. One eminent Russian scholar said men under average conditions of work and life use only a small part of their thinking equipment. If we were able to force our brain to work at only half its capacity, we could, without difficulty whatsoever, learn 40 languages, memorize the encyclopedia from cover to cover, and complete the required coursework of dozens of colleges. A statement like that makes us realize how we form the habit of living in low gear, getting through, as Thomas Henry Huxley once put it, without too much discredit. The human brain has four remarkable powers that far exceed anything yet built into a machine. First, it has the power to absorb, to take in information and knowledge of every kind. We do this by reading, listening, touching, by using our five of our senses. Our minds are like unlimited corals with the gates wide open. Second, we have the power of retention, the capacity to retain knowledge and recall it. The human mind can capture, store, recall, and program more than 600 bits of information per second, keeping all of it readily available for recall and use with unlimited space for additional information. Third, we have the power of judgment of logical thought. The more facts we feed our, feed our brain, the more it is able to reason and judge intelligently. Fourth, the greatest power of all is the power of imagination. The ability to think creatively, to take all ideas and combine them into new relationships, to dream, to think of things that do not now exist, to project ourselves into the future with automatic, with the automatic time machine of our minds. That's the power that's made humans what they are. As I've mentioned previously, researchers such as Dr. Maslow suggest that people who live close to their true capacity have a pronounced sense of well-being and considerable energy and see themselves as leading purposeful and creative lives. Isn't that what we all want? And, uh, you know, I really see it really comes down to process about how do you bring this to people? How do you bring it to everybody? How, how would you teach this in schools? And, you know, my business coach and her mentor, Bob Proctor, have, you know, found out how to do that. And I think there's a number of different ways to do it. But, um, you know, I really think it's inspiring about um, what, what's really possible for um, education and um, success. Thanks for listening.